Well, I'm taking the, uh, this uh, opportunity to try to review some of the trends that we see in the market, or that we have seen in the market in 2018, and we believe that we'll uh, uh, proceed into uh, 2019. I would say that you probably are aware of all of them. Some of them are experiencing first hands, but it's in any case worth mentioning. So electronic communication are evolving. We are changing the way that we are communicating between ourselves with our kids and between humans, I would say. These days we are communicating via voice, chat, messenger, WhatsApp. Uh, you know what? I also communicate with my bank in Israel with fax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, digital country. Uh, but, but it will continue to evolve because this is the this is where uh, uh, the digital era is coming into place, and we are human. <coughs> and you know, advisors and traders are humans as well, so they are communicating, and they are communicating as well in any sort of electronic communication, if we, as, as a firm, if the firms will allow it, or if it won't allow it. Eventually, it will be, it will be a standard. And we are starting to see, I don't know if we have colleagues here from uh, Banco de Brazil, but we are seeing we're one of the first movers here uh, uh, allowing uh, uh, WhatsApp transactions from, uh, from uh, Brazil. And we see Mary Lynch uh, approving to communicate with uh, advisors, uh, for advisors to communicate with their uh, customers via text messages. And we know that traders are also aware of it. So they are being careful with their language. <laughs> that will never happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but you see... My dream, my <laughs> but we see that banks are forced, or firms are forced to move into this uh, digital era. Why? Because this is what their employees and what their customers are uh, pushing them for. That's a nice line. <laughs> it's AI, guys. The AI promise. <laughs> Definitely one of uh, 2018 uh, must-use phrases, so I had to use it, and I also had to use this uh, very nice... Uh, it's almost like blockchain. So if you have AI and blockchain, then you are set. You can do whatever you want. Well, AI... And I, <laughs> AI isn't a man. <coughs> it's oftly mentioned, it's oftly being used in every pitch, in every, in every presentation that uh, everyone around <coughs> are using, uh, not only in the financial services specs, but in, any, in anything related to technology. And to be, to be honest, I think that there is still, we are only at the beginning of this uh, phenomena, and there is still a long way to go. Um, <coughs> I would say that in order for the industry to really derive value from AI, there is a need to a wider, uh, wider uh, cooperation between vendors and firms, mainly for the use of data. And don't get me wrong, um, AI is very important because it will, it's, it's a way to uh, provide automation of processes and optimization of processes. Things like uh, uh, false negative, uh, false positive reduction and stuff like that are, are possible, uh, are achievable. Uh, uh, but there is still a way to go and there is a, a, a need for a wider cooperation within the industry, vendors, regulators, and uh, uh, financial firms for the data. According to our friends in Thomson Reuters, we're talking about compliance now, up to 20% of the firms, by 2020, it's just around the corner, by 20% of the firms' labor or spending, I would say, spending associated to compliance, uh, will be associated to compliance, which is mainly on uh, labor these days. And in this sense, we are looking into compliance, and we see that many, or at least in our domain, uh, uh, many tasks are still handled manually. Many tasks are still managed manually by compliance officer, by lawyers. One of the, uh, we read an article in the Financial Times that analyzed the, the way that the compliance officers are working or lawyers are working. And they were um, they're, they're stating that in the uh, 15 years ago, a lawyer that reviewed a case uh, in, in the financial investigation uh, uh, perspective, uh, doesn't matter if it's an AMA or something else, they were reviewing approximately 20,000 documents for that specific uh, investigation. This date, the same investigation will probably uh, require us to review two million 
dot lines involve uh, and because, first of all the MIFID they contribute a bunch of uh, documents to that but we're talking about the change of communication so now we have voice and chats and emails and, and all of it is to be reviewed so that's the uh, a, a compliance uh, challenge one of the uh, uh, one of my favorite uh, aspects especially when I'm speaking with uh, firms is the uh, build versus buy <coughs> dilemma and on constant debate. Well, I said that in the past, or the, in previous year, we see firms uh, were more inclined to build their own uh, solution, but I would say in the, in, in the last year or two, we started to see a shift where um, more and more firms are uh, reconsidering this uh, strategy and more leaning and more accepting the um, uh, firms, firms like us, accepting uh, uh, solutions uh, uh, from uh, uh, bigger names than us, like uh, Thomson Reuters or Infinity, and uh, uh, to uh, and adapting their uh, adapting their technology and buying off-the-shelf software. Now, th there is no clear answer for build versus buy. I believe that it should be build and uh, uh, buy and build eventually. So the smart platforms or the smart solution as vendors will need to provide a solution which is adaptive. It provides maybe 80% out of the box capabilities and 20% the ability to change, to add, to modify, to adapt it to their specific needs, to make it their own platform. So this is a... So when we are looking into um, how we are looking into these uh, uh, challenges and uh, our approach. So, as mentioned, we are in the midst of the Ecom Zero, um, and every solution that will be expected, or every solution in the market, will be expected to address both the current and the future communication demands, file formats, requirements, <coughs> uh, uh, storage, archive, analytics, every, every aspect of the data coming from the unstructured will need to be addressed now and in the future, no matter what will be the type of, uh, of uh, communication uh, that the uh, uh, organizations or humans will communicate. But not only that, it will also need to look into the cross-regulation requirements and to address not only the financial regulation, but also privacy regulations. So uh, uh, it shouldn't be siloed in the terms of uh, uh, managing a managing regulation-based project. It should be a cross-regulation approach. So uh, uh, when we are dealing with a capturing of electronic communication, um, we need to consider and take into, uh, or to, to take under consideration <coughs> that there is a GDPR element and the trader, although he is human, he is also a new citizen. So he is also uh, uh, have the rights of, uh, a, a, of a privacy and how to handle the data. And so there are wider aspects to that, and customers will require, because we are capturing the data as part of, uh, as part of MIFID or as part of market abuse, and we are analyzing the data. So we have an obligation as part of e-privacy, for example. <coughs> so that's something that will be required to address both the current requirements of electronic communication and the future requirements, but also the current and future regulation requirements. The open platform thing. Well, this is a statement, right? Uh, we believe that, and this is again, it's our, it's one of our main mantra uh, and uh, beliefs. We believe that firms, mainly financial firms here, which is our target, should buy a platform that provides the functionality that required, but also have the agility to modify and to change and to make it their own platform. I also believe that, and I have to accept and embrace with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the modesty here that uh, vendors doesn't, don't have all the expertise in the world. They need to cooperate in an ecosystem. They need to work with service provider. They need to work with consultancy firms that are bringing, we need to work with analytical uh, firms. They need to deliver what they are experts in and to be able to be part of this ecosystem that will be able to contribute. It's called in some cases the best of breed, right? But it, this is, I believe that this is what, and, and, and 
to, to enable a best of breed and a, and a tightly integrated uh, platform, you need to have an open platform from, from all the, the parties in the, in the game. So I believe that vendors should leave room for third parties, for uh, service <coughs> provider, for consultancy firm, for the customer themselves, to the data scientists within the organization to be able to change, to modify, to deal with the data as it is their own platform, as like they developed it and built it themselves. Yeah. Um, when we're looking into uh, uh, compliance, intelligent, uh, this is a, a big, uh, it's a big statement. Uh, compliance spending will need to be reduced. Right? This twenty percent cannot hold for uh, cannot hold for long. Um, and the and the grow or the the uh, uh, introduction of uh, technology should support this uh, this uh, reduction in uh, in labor cost and uh, uh, provide more efficiency. I believe that. Uh, Automation and automation of compliance processes, and yes, also with the use of uh, technologies like uh, AI, uh, is uh, mandatory in order to address this uh, uh, this efficiency uh, efficiency <coughs> overheads. If we are looking on ROI, which is, it was very hard to talk about ROI since uh, until now because uh, ROI when when we we start to speak on uh, with, with, with the wider scope of MIFID and uh, and the market abuse, for example, it was mainly related to fines, how you can not get the fine, or how you can retain your reputation, uh, your reputation, and by that, you know, there is a value to that. I think that we need to look into ROI also from the sense of how we can automate and reduce the, the number of processes, how we can reduce the labor cost or move from manual tasks to a more automated uh, activities. And the next step in this strategy, I think Tom said that, is how do we shift also to provide, together with the customer, with our customers, uh, access to the data that will give them business insights. We are already collecting the data. We are collecting the electronic communication. There is a lot of other data that Velocity is uh, uh, collected in Velocity and in other, in other platforms. How you can generate business insight out of it and reflect it in real time, post real time, that doesn't really change. And this, I believe, will generate a stronger ROI, which is uh, it's the evolution here, the required evolution. So um, I have one thing. Uh, uh, breaking the silos is um, a real challenge, a real challenge to deal with the data. As you can understand, that it's, uh, it's all about the data, if the data is good or not good. And we are specifically dealing with the, uh, a more complicated and more challenging part of the data, which is the unstructured part of it. And um, I would, uh, from what we have seen so far in 2017 and 2018, firms kind of avoided this part uh, um, part it. They were capturing, they were capturing the voice, they were capturing email or chat in siloed platform, and they kind of avoided the, the, the real uh, a, a correlation and, and an analytic part of, uh, of this uh, platform. And um, I believe the time is come for and the maturity of the solution, the maturity of the customers, and yes, they pass the, 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 the critical point of uh, trade reporting and all other elements in uh, MIFID, time comes for breaking down the silos and move from the capture into the uh, correlation and analytical part of the, uh, of the uh, trade and electronic communication, eventually in order to drive a more compliance and more value out of the uh, uh, electronic uh, communication. And uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you.